Would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and pledge of the flag? We have eight proclamations, so bear with. We were going to try to do a, two or three of them a couple of months ago, and it didn't work out. So eight proclamations. First up, I'd like to invite Elizabeth Southern isn't here, right? So David Griffith, the great great our great grand nephew of Alan Abrams, okay, to come up as well. And legislator Mike Anagnostakis. First up, we have a proclamation for Alan Abrams, who served as a legislator in the in this body for five years, many years ago, probably 30 years ago, I believe. David is a village treasurer of Village Montgomery. We gave him off to come up here because this is very important. Um, do you want to read the proclamation and then Mike and I just talk and say a few words? He represented me for four years, a good friend of the family. So. Sure. You should, you're actually getting back at me because you should ask you to read them. So. Uh, this is a resolution from the legislature of the County of Orange honoring the memory of Alan William Abrams, outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, World War II veteran, and former county legislator for the 18th Legislative District on this first uh, anniversary of his passing. Uh, and there's a bunch of whereas, so just uh, bear with me. Whereas it is fitting and appropriate to recognize the career and life of an outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, who set a noble and important example of citizenship, which is essential to the preservation of our society on this regular meeting of the Orange County Legislature. And whereas uh, Alan William Abrams established a prominent and admired place in the local and county community, he epitomized the fundamental virtues upon which our nation is founded and set an example to which all persons may aspire. The life of Alan William Abrams demonstrates that love of a service of, to his country, family, community, and a personal conviction to hard work and strive for excellence are key to the life of uh, to a life of fulfillment. And whereas Alan William Abrams influenced every important public policy decision made uh, during his five years on the legislature. Uh, during his tenure, he served on numerous legislative committees, including the Personnel and Compensation from 1973 to 77, uh, Physical Services from 1973 to 77. Uh, uh, his commitment and service to the county is deeply appreciated. And whereas Alan, Alan William Abrams uh, was a World War II veteran serving as a fighter pilot, CBI theater, uh, in the 6th Fighter Squad, uh, should be squad, right? Or Squad, okay, squad, in the 1st Air Commando Group. He was a member of the Veterans of Fort Morris Post uh, 2061 and the American Legion. He was known as Maybrook's Chief of Police and Superintendent of Public Works, positions he served for over 31 years. He also served on the Village of Maybrook Planning Board for over 30 years. Alan Williams Abrams faithfully served the Maybrook Fire Department for 71 plus years and was a Town of Montgomery Councilman for 17 years. Now, therefore, here, uh, hereby resolve that we, the legislature of the County of Orange, do hereby formally memorialize our profound sentiments on the anniversary of the passing of Alan uh, William Abrams, 
on behalf of ourselves and the people of the County of Orange County, uh, uh, whose interest and service he was so dedicated. And it is further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the records of this body as a permanent memorial and as his enduring uh, standard for its members and for our citizens, given this first day of June. And Michael, uh, and Agnes Away, but I think it's uh, fitting that we leave it because his partner in life was Rose, and Rose was, was a Rose. Um, she wanted to be with him. She finally joined him a few months back. Um, so I think we're really celebrating both of their lives here today. And I'm kind of sorry Liz isn't here because I have a little story I'll tell you. Maybe you'll help her. She'll remember the story. I'll never forget him. The day that I met him the first time. Um, the day before, it was 2009, my first campaign, the day before I had met Bob DeLong. He was a former legislator, he told me. And so the next day, I'm heading up the hill and I'm making a right-hand turn on Highland Avenue and I'm working the street going north and I get to the last street of the house and I meet this wonderful gentleman and Alan tells me he was a former legislator. And we had a wonderful talk and he did gardening and then I worked the street, Highland Avenue going south and I got the, I think, the last house on the other side of the road, a couple of hours later, and I've got my walking list, and it's Liz Southern, and she opens the door, and I say, I'm running for county legislator, and she says, my dad used to be a county legislator. So, of course, I'm not too swift. I don't put two and two together. I'm thinking to myself, is everybody in my district a former county legislator? Um, so she was wonderful, too. So God bless him. God bless Rose. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you. Do you want to say anything? Or? You're good. Uh, David is the treasurer of the village of Montgomery, as, as I just said. His mother was a deputy clerk for many years, and Doreen is his wife as well, too, that works in the legislature. So they like being around government. But we salute Alan's service. He did a lot, so much for the village of Maybrook and, and the town of Montgomery, and we have the utmost respect for him. Thank you for coming. Want to get a picture? Okay, next up, I'd like to invite Hank Van Leeuwen and Betty and his whole family, and Mac and Terry McEwen as well. And anybody else you want to bring up? Okay. So apparently, they're changing the plan. We're not going to roast Hank Van Leeuwen today? Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to read a couple of these whereasses. Uh, whereas Henry Hank Van Leeuwen served on the Orange County Industrial Development Agency Board for 30 years before retiring in January of 2017, his business insight and passion for instrumental uh, was instrumental to the success of the IDA, which contributed to bringing thousands of jobs to Orange County. And whereas uh, Henry Hank Van Leeuwen held a prominent place in the local community, having served for over 30 years on the New Windsor Planning Board, where he devoted much of his time working to provide affordable housing. He was a member of the Town of New Windsor Republican Committee, where he was also serving as chairman. He was active in other ways in the county as a member of the Goshen Rotary, the Museum Village Board of Directors, and the Cornwall Hospital Board. He has performed several acts of service for many organizations over the years, in addition to owning his own business, Arkell Motors, in uh, New Windsor for over 40 years. So uh, I'll just add a little bit to it. Um, I have a plaque for you, and I paid for the plaque, so don't worry about it, legislators. But uh, I can't speak enough volumes about Hank Van Leeuwen. I mean, he's truly an altruistic individual. Um, he's done so much. His whole life has been dedicated to public service. Um, the IDA for over 30 years, Town of New Windsor uh, Planning Board, Republican Committee, Museum Village, uh, Daughters of the American Revolution, Orange County Firefighters Museum, he helped out, any non-for-profit. I mean, he's just a, a, a class individual, 
and I can't say, and it's appropriate that Mario's here today too, we are one of your favorite restaurants, so you're both being honored, so you can have a toast later, right? And, uh, but you know, he came from the old country in, in Amsterdam, um, his family uh, really made it in America, they're, they're truly the American dream, his mother, um, they hid, they hid some of the Jewish refugees in the wells, and, uh, and his mother was shot in the foot as a result, and uh, they took care of the gentleman. But just uh, so many stories about the old country and how he made it here. My father bought many a truck from Hank. Hank drove a hard bargain, but the handshake, once it was done, it was done. And he treated my father very well. <laughs> but uh, for all you've done, can't thank you enough. And, we had a little uh, little party at Cosimo's, the IDA, to, to wish you farewell, and he said I had to resign because I was shouting stuff out a little bit too much. And Eddie, Eddie Diana told him, said, Hank, you've been doing that for 30 years. What's the big deal? <laughs> you know? But uh, we wish you all the success and happy early retirement, not early retirement, late retirement, you. with your family. I, Betty, Betty Ann, I know, uh, you know, just great, great family. And, An and, and Annika, excuse me, I can't talk, Annika. Annika. Anika works for the uh, Water Authority, worked for the IDA before that. Very efficient young lady. Why didn't you call? Oh, you're taking. Yeah, we're taking doing over here, right? but, And his other daughter, too, as well, lives across the street from him. All right, guys. Um, I'll just read this plaque. Orange County Legislature presents to Henry Hank Van Lewin in recognition for a lifetime of service in the public, private, and non for profit sector. Your unparalleled dedication will long be remembered and appreciated. Printed or presented June 1st, 2017, L. Stephen Gresham, County Legislature. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'd like to find, thank all the legislators that voted for me and helped me get along on this board, and I loved it. Okay? I was eight years old when I came here, and I learned right away. I spent another three or four years back over there. And I learned right away, you got to give to get, okay? And this is a wonderful country, or none. We've been to a lot of places, you can't beat America, and I love it. Good friends. Thanks again. And, and he was always remembered on the IDA when he would vote for something. He would always say, I shouldn't, but I will. Every vote, <laughs> just about. Next up, I, thanks again for all your years of service. Okay, next up we have Mario Blachik. Please come up and Anne Marie, come up with him because I know you're a regular there for, for dinner, right? <laughs> Team Crumpets once in a while. Anybody else here, Mario, you want to bring up? Uh, Mario Balachik, my sister, should come up too. Um, this is a gentleman that's very near and dear to my heart, and he was recently added by, um, honored by the New York State Senate for 30 years in business. Um, I met Mario nearly 40 years ago when he had Talk of the Town in Walden, and uh, it was a great restaurant there, and he had a restaurant in Manhattan and Bergen County, New Jersey before that. Traveled around the world in the Merchant Marine. And just came to America, and it was it's the American dream. It's like a Horatio Alger epic. Um, he's such a benevolent individual, and I can't begin to tell you how important he is in the village of Montgomery. He's got one of the finest restaurants in the Hudson Valley, and I know many people on this stage have eaten there. Amo and Kulisek and DeSalvo especially, and, and Vero and, and a few others. But uh, no, just one of the best restaurants around. And, and he's, he's really a family atmosphere, a giving individual, he was just named a little over a week ago the Grand Marshal for this year's General Montgomery Day because he's given so much to our community, and I can't thank him enough. You want to read the proclamation? I know you've eaten there many times. Absolutely. You're giving away all everybody's secret spots here. So, uh, whereas uh, the legislature is proud to recognize the illustrious culinary establishment, 88 Charles Street, Montgomery, New York, which has positively, uh, positively, sorry, uh, impacted and uh, substantially contributed to the vitality of the community. Mario Balachik, I only know you Mario, so Balachik, sorry, has owned and operated 88 Charles Street for 30 years, 
He started his culinary career in 1965 while serving as a merchant marine, assisting the chef. He worked uh, making soups and pasta dishes, chicken, veal, beef, and Italian bread while sailing to Africa, Australia, China, Japan, South America, and California. I don't know how California got lumped in different countries, but okay. Um, after four years with the Merchant Marines, he moved back to New York, where he opened his first restaurant in Astoria, Queens, which, uh, with the help of his two brothers, he opened a second restaurant in Burden County, New Jersey. Uh, during those years, Mario took a drive through Montgomery, New York, and fell in love with the town. He went back and opened a restaurant in Walden, New York. After four years, he bought 88 Troll Street property, which turned into 88 Troll Street. And... Um, I'll just continue. He was educated at culinary school in France uh, and is well versed in food and with his specialties being seafood and vegetables. Uh, he believes in the freshness of his, pro, uh, of his produce and tries to personally pick out his ingredients at the market. Attributing much of his success to the rich flavor of his fresh food, he has many uh, dedicated customers, some of whom come in as, came in as children and today uh, still patronize. 88 Troll Street, and uh, I think we're, okay, hold on, let me just, one where is. Uh, 88 Troll Street continues to provide exceptional service and superior cuisine. The entrees uh, are made fresh every day and are uh, designed around the finest locally produced ingredients which offer increased flavor and quality, pleasing the palates of its customers uh, from not only New York, but around the nation. So, uh, and you paid for this one. I paid for this one. <laughs> the county budget. <laughs> Mayor, I just have to say, he does have a couple of his own laws that he enacted down there, too. Have, Montgomery Day, we have to have the soapbox derby done by 4.30. Or, you know. And then one time he asked me about uh, plowing the... He, wanted to, he walks the trails in Montgomery. He loves a deer and walking around the, by the river and everything. And he, in the wintertime, we don't plow the trails. And he, he asked me if we would do that, and I told him no. And then, and then he just gave me one of these Mario Vice Crips, and you don't want to <laughs> change my mind. We thought it a little bit after that. <laughs> but uh, Orange County Legislature presents to Mario Balachik in recognition of the 30th anniversary of 88 Charles Street Cafe, one of the finest restaurants in the Hudson Valley, given this first day of June 2017, L. Stephen Brescia, Chairman, Orange County Legislature, in behalf of us. He's a man of a few words. He lets his, his uh, culinary talents do the speaking. Thank you, Mario and Anne Marie. So he's got everything in the warehouse Thank you again. And Mario's off on Thursdays. That's why the only way we got him here, I think. Okay, what do we have next? We've got Dairy Month. Marie Aldrich. Paul Ruskevich, please come up. You're going to help with these presentations. New York's leading agricultural product and is produced all across the state, milk sales account for one half of the total agricultural receipts. Production in 2017 was about 1.26 billion pounds with a preliminary value of $195 million. New York is, uh, is back to being the nation's third leading producer of milk. And uh, then there's a whole bunch of other ones, Steve, but okay, I'll skip to them. Uh, the 2007-2018 Orange County Dairy Promotional Court, including the following individuals, and I don't know if they're in the same order, so you might want to just raise your hand as I read the names. Uh, Julie uh, Goldsmith, okay, she's here. Uh, Teddy Matthews, Kieran McCarthy, Gabriella Miyashi, okay. Uh, Olivia Parkin, uh, Aaron Ackerley, Hannah Oates, Joey Wickham, as the dairy ambassadors, as well as Hannah Weibold, uh, is she here? Okay. Sophia Parkin, and uh, owner Raya uh, Demarest as the milk beans. So I will refer to you, which is our ag and uh, dairy guy. 
Yeah, I didn't get a plaque. All right. Uh, well, I just want to uh, congratulate you. Uh, June is dairy month. Uh, it's a very important uh, part of agriculture here in Orange County. Um, I think there's 40 some dairy farms left in. Oh, skip. oh, you skipped the he 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 go to first and last right. as the chairman well, anyway. legislature. Anyway, there's about uh, 40 dairy farms left in Orange County, which is um, quite a bit fewer than what it once was. Uh, but it, their it, dairy industry is still uh, alive and well here in Orange County. And uh, uh, I want to thank the, uh, the dairy ambassadors here. It's always encouraging to see the next generation taking such an active uh, interest in agriculture. I know 4-H has a very active dairy uh, explorers program i don't know they've had several youth that uh, didn't come from an ag background that went through the program and a number of them went on to college to study agriculture so uh that's a great thing to see congratulations and uh thanks for doing what you do it is lucy joy where is she out there with us lucy's in the back of the cornell crop of extension they've gotten you should come up here lucy because this is your wheelhouse uh they've gotten very creative over the last couple of years with um we do a milking contest where they bring in people that have really nothing to do with the dairy, except for Lou Heinbach, who is, I guess, the reigning champion, uh, to try to promote dairy and the industry here. Uh, Dave Church, who is in the back of the room, who spoke earlier, um, is also very active with myself and Bill Johnson. We're talking about different alternatives to the dairy uh, farms in Orange County, as well as all, all our partners up here. So uh, that's it for me, uh, Chairman. Or So we just want to thank the legislature, the county executive, and the people of Orange County for respecting agriculture, understanding that dairy farms are a huge part of, and their support land is a huge part of all the open space you see in the county, part of what keeps this county beautiful, and it does have its economic benefit of providing jobs and a wonderful multiplier effect with agriculture. So thank you all for your attention. They have big plans for Cornell. They're working on the, the arena this month. They're starting. And then future plans. They're doing a lot of great fundraising things now. And thank you for all the invites you send us and the emails from Marie. And, you know, we're definitely supportive. Okay, who's next? Uh, okay, is this Anne Marie or not? Yes, yep. absolutely. Anne Marie, you can start us off and then you want to do the. You're doing a good job of reading, I think. You, I did this, I think the last six months I've made you suffer through this and you got the. Uh, I'll just say. Uh, uh, you know, you want to read to, to talk about Peggy, but about three weeks ago we had lunch together, Peggy and some of her closest friends, as well as her current boss, Bruce Campbell, who's a police chief in the town of Newburgh. And uh, with us in the, that day was Bruce, was also Butch Ampler, the chief of Walden and Montgomery and also in Maybrook. The day after we had lunch with him, he got shot, and thankfully uh, he's making a full recovery. Uh, but he was at with you uh, uh, celebrating not only your, your birthday, which you just recently had, but you're also still serving, working for the police department. And Bruce takes you, you're, you're with the chief in this car, you keep him organized. Harry Poor mentioned to me that his father, right Harry, is a father-in-law. You worked with his father-in-law uh, and you're continuing to serve today. So uh, thank you, it's great to see you again. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Anne-Marie. And thank you. You know, it's it's such our pleasure to be honoring Peggy today. Um, each year we pick two individuals that really exemplify um, their commitment to the community, their commitment to um, their 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 commitment to the community and everything that really epitomizes the wealth that seniors provide to our community. So I'm glad that um, it was a no-brainer that we did it for you this year. Uh, a proclamation of the legislature of the County of Orange honoring Peggy Bennett on the occasion of her recognition for outstanding contribution by a senior citizen for 2017. Whereas it is fitting and appropriate to publicly recognize the many good works and kind deeds of an individual performed without publicity or fanfare, for many years which have made significant contributions to the quality of life of many of the most frail and needed citizens. Whereas recognition is not freely given or gratuitously conferred, but rather is earned only by the most devoted commitment to human needs and enormous expenditure of personal effort and time in meeting those needs. 
whereas Peggy Bennett of Newburgh was raised in Brooklyn in 19, and in 1946 moved to Newburgh, where she raised her family. Before retiring in 1991, Peggy worked for 38 years as a legal secretary, and during that time served as president of her local chapter of the National Association of Legal Secretaries. And I think you guys still get together, right? So, which is great. She is an active volunteer in Orange County, helping others come naturally to her, and she gets great satisfaction in meeting new friends and feeling needed. Penny enrolled as our RSVP, which is our senior, um, retired senior volunteer program volunteer in 93, and he has volunteered in 14 different capacities, ranging from Orange County Senior Advisory Council, Disaster Preparedness, Senior Games, TNT Tappers, which Peggy still dances to this day at the at the young age of 98. Um, she delivers meals to the homebound. She t assists with tax returns, and she now still continues to work at the Newburgh Police Department. She has uh, served over 6,530 volunteer hours to our community. Uh, so thereby proclaim that this is a day of recognition of the achievements and good works of Peggy Bennett. Um, for your self-esteem, respect, and appreciation, given the first day of June 2017. So Peggy, come on up. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody. It was a pleasure volunteering. I made a lot of friends. I want to thank you, Shane. So we have a bunch of certificates for you, Peggy, to go with the ones you got a few weeks ago. Here's a certificate of recognition, uh, congratulating you on outstanding contributions uh, by the uh, Senior Award for Orange County by the Office of the Aging. You got the proclamation to your right from uh, Anne Marie. Uh, Mike, did you want to say, you're, you're, you're her legislator. Sure, absolutely. Peggy, congratulations. Uh, I mean, in the town of Newburgh, volunteering and Peggy are synonymous. Um, everybody knows they're there for all the work. Just imagine, 6,500 hours of volunteer just since she's been counting. If you were to think about it, if you were to volunteer three hours every single day, Monday to Friday, three hours every day, you'd be doing it 10 years and you'd still have to do more to catch up to Peggy. So Peggy, I know you just had a birthday. I'm not gonna say how old you are. I don't care. But very <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. If you're, I don't know why you're hiding all the way to back. <laughs> Would you like to come up here, young lady? So, uh, Vera Green uh, Dixon, she, actually a newlywed. How long have you been married? Two years. Two years? You're a newlywed last time we saw you, so. Which was two weeks ago, she still said she's a newlywed. I've been married 10 years, it gets, it gets old, but it's all rewarding as time goes by. So she's the Orange County citizen, uh, uh, Senior Citizen of the Year. Uh, she's from Hamptonburg, and uh, I'll read a couple of uh, whereases. And uh, whereas the essence of life devoted to good citizenship is measured not merely by one's uh, compliance with the with the legal acceptable norms of society, but also by the extra efforts and volunteer activities assumed by uh, for the benefit of others and for the whole community. Whereas Vera Green Dixon of Campbell Hall worked in Orange County Finance Department for 29 years and is now enjoying her retirement with her husband, Ralph Dixon, Jr. Uh, and Ralph's up there, you don't want to bring him up here? Oh, you said you're on your honeymoon still. Okay. I don't know what's going on there in Campbell Hall. So, she has continued with her passion for bowling, and in the past 38 years, she has participated in a national uh, tournament of bowling, and uh, she and her husband enjoy traveling, and uh, together they deliver meals for to the less fortunate. She is soft-spoken, dedicated, intelligent, warm, friendly, organized, and an asset to the community. 
and whereas she is currently Vice President of the Orange County Senior Council, Chairperson of the Orange County Senior Council Spring and Fall Luncheon, Chairperson of the Orange Senior Council Fundraising Raffle, Member of the Maybrook Seniors, a Delivery Driver for the Maybrook's Home Delivery Meals Program, Member and Treasurer of the Hamptonburg Seniors, Member of the, now I know why you guys are married and happily married, okay. <laughs> Member of the Orange County Senior Games Committee, or I'm not even halfway done yet, folks. Tour coordinator for the Maybrook and Hamptonburg Seniors, past president and past treasurer of the Otter Kill Engine Auxiliary, second vice president and past president of the Orange County Volunteer Firemen's Ladies Auxiliary, president of the Tri-County New York United States Bowling Congress, member of the Hall of Fame of the Tri-County New York United States Bowling Congress, and deacon of the First Presbyterian Church of Hamptonburg, as well as a member of the fundraising committees uh, and chicken barbecue committees. Her uh, community contributions are definitely inspiring. So, uh, <laughs> oh, congratulations, that was really impressive. Um, you know, there's nothing more important than this body does than honor those people that work quietly without fanfare behind the scenes. And this is certainly the perfect example of that. I don't know Vera well, I know her from a distance. You know, I, I've been in my town almost as long as her. But, you know, shame on me. If I knew her more, I'd, I'd be doing more volunteering. So that, that's kind of a, a message to me. So congratulations. To the both of you, you got a wonderful wife there. Have you met her before? Since she's not. Yeah. Congratulations, um, Anne Marie. Do you want to say a few words? Because obviously you interact a lot. I, you can certainly understand why we nominated her. Um, aside from all of the many, many things that she does for the community, she's truly one of the kindest, most loving people I've ever met. So um, this is just a, such a small. Um, recognition for us. Thank you for everything that you do. I just want to say thank you to everybody to help me to get this far and I will continue to do as much as I can for the seniors and anybody else I can help. Thank you very much, Peggy and Vera, for all you do for your, your communities and the County of Orange as well. We definitely uh, appreciate it. Okay, we have a couple more, Emory, and then we're one more, not the RSVP. So, I guess it's June 1st, but May is um, um, Older Americans Month, which is when we start honoring our seniors of the year. Um, we've been taking them to, to many, many things. Peggy said, how many more things do they still have to go to? <laughs> but we really want to honor you. So we do this, we'll do it throughout the rest of the year. But you know, it's very important to recognize Older Americans Month. And there's 75,000 citizens that are age 60 and older that call Orange County home. And you know, when we say what it means to age, it's really for the better. Um, Orange County provides opportunities to enrich the lives of individuals by involving older adults in the redefinition of aging in our community, promoting home and community-based services that just support independent living, encouraging older adults to speak up for themselves and others, and providing opportunities for older adults to share their experiences. And you know, I will say that, I, and I have to commend the legislature and the county executive, this truly is one of the best counties to, to age in because there's respect. People get it when I when I say I have some great ideas, or or you know Peggy or Vera will say you know this would be really wonderful. You never have to sell these people. They get it and they they want everybody to live here. So I, I thank you and um, please join me in celebrating last month as Old Americans Month. Thank you. Thank you again for all you do and in, and Danielle, excuse me, as well.
We have one more. So as we're talking about all of the, um, the, the two significant individuals that have really um, donated so much of their time for their community, we thought it would be we thought it'd be interesting to get together and really talk about all of the seniors that volunteer their time. And there are many, many hours throughout a variety of, of places in the community that they do. So what we thought is we, this is Sherry. Sherry is, uh, Sherry runs the RSVP program. We thought that we would get together and add up all the volunteer hours, divide it by, is it $19? $26. And we save $1.185,681. I don't think that we could really afford to pay that. So this enhances our community, and we've saved that much. So again, thank you for doing everything that you do. Yesterday we had our um, sixth annual Senior Health and Fitness Day. Um, we've been doing it for the past six years. Uh, yesterday was our biggest event we've had yet. Um, we've had we had about 60 vendors, health and wellness vendors, everyone from hospitals, nursing homes, managed long-term cares, um, chiropractors, dentists, etc. Um, and we had um, about 200 seniors. So it was a really great day. Um, you know we can't thank you enough for all of your support and. Um, we look forward to next year. Thank you. I would just like to have a moment of silence. Anne Marie lost her mother over the last week or so, and uh, just for Anne Marie for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have two speakers signed up for public participation Early Doles down in North Monroe. minutes so please bear with me. The issues of creating a town of North Monroe are too complex to discuss in three minutes. But for money in Monroe and elsewhere, the matter is time consuming. Moreover, the one person who needs to speak before the legislator and the residents of Orange County is Curious Joel Administrator of Gedalia Zegedin. When most of the local officials are playing political checkers trying to figure out the next move or two, Mrs. Zegedin is engaged in a strategic game of survival for Kirish Joel, which looks at 10, 20, or even 50 years down the road. But the time to stop political maneuvering, no matter how much Mr. Zegedin is doing for the sake of his community, is now. He can explain better than anyone KJ's plans, both in and outside of KJ. 
is a global agreement with Blooming Grove and Woodbury, he suggests, stand any chance for success. Given time and asking the right questions and getting answers, perhaps North Monroe is a better solution than the 164-acre annexation. But we need Mr. Zegadin. Attorneys and consultants provide information. Mr. Zegadin can provide the answers we are all begging to ask, and for nearly 20 years. Most of us recognize that KJ is evolving into the dream their founder envisioned, a community where ultra-Orthodox Jews can live in peace and practice their faith without fear. No one has suffered more in modern history than the Jews. America promised freedom, and their rabbi, with deep gratitude, accepted America's offer. But the growth of the ultra-Orthodox -Orthodox community moving outside of KJ because of the stalled annexation or from the thousands of families from Brooklyn, Rockland, and elsewhere are concerns which will face each district this legislature represents. What is the effect on county taxes? Will services increase for one district at the expense of others? How will the 60,000 new residents, which Mr. Newhouse has kitchen cabinet of unofficial policy advisors states as fact, impact roads, sewer, and other critical forms of infrastructures? We will not find this in CGR's reports or any previous seeker reviews, but the impact will be felt countrywide county nonetheless. In Woodbury, Blooming Grove, Hasidic families are planting their roots while mega developers are paying a premium for approved shovel-ready projects. The six square plus miles of Hasidic owned land and property outside of KJ is expanding with no end in sight. They have the right to build, but the county has the obligation to regulate growth. Legislator Agnagastakis and Assemblyman Skubis had led the charge for a responsible Kiris Joel. Their comments about social service abuse and dependency, and KG being municipal outlaws unwilling to comply with laws which others follow or as serial, serial environmental offenders has cast a terrible shadow on Monroe. Sound bites cost nothing, but the hurt and harm has caused a terrible has taken a terrible tool, toll. Solutions cost time, efforts and trust and each other. However, trust has been replaced by politics, and when and where KJ's 10,000 votes plus votes are needed most, people will look towards them. I can tell you with absolute certainty that in over 12 years on the town board, KJ has never asked for anything they were not entitled to. In fact, they represent 35% of the entire town budget. We have been good neighbors minding our own business until recently. We have been accused of crimes over and over. No law enforcement agency has ever suggested any wrongdoing between the town and the village. But neither KJ nor Moreau has ever been charged with abuse of office as well, and it never will. However, I can only hope that if the town of North Monroe does come to fruition, you and the town of North Monroe and the Orange County will have a similar ration that we have had for so many years. In closing, please allow for all meetings to be open to the public and the press. They have a right to know who's negotiating the future. Thank you. Okay, next up is Dennis, I can't read it. Uh, Dennis Lynch, is it, Esquire? Okay, good. Um, attorney for the town of? Blooming Grove. Blooming Grove, okay. Thank you, Chairman, members of uh, the legislature and others present. Uh, I understand after we got here from your one of your distinguished assistants that item number 11 is being withdrawn. So that being the case, uh, I'm going to limit my comments very, very quickly. Um, heritage parking lot, the word heritage is very important. This county and this town has had a great heritage of working together with other towns. I'm pleased to have one of our uh, town board members, Joanna Karen, present, as well as with one of my co-counsel, Elise Terhune. Uh, we're proud to have an office in uh, Washingtonville. We're, part, we're proud to be part of our firm in Orange County. And we're looking forward to working with your distinguished county attorney to come up with a solution. Uh, the fact it's being withdrawn, I think, gives this county legislator time to look at the uh, Orange County Land Trust proposal for a parking lot nearby. I think we can work cooperatively. I think we can work in partnership. And if we can do that, it will be a great heritage in many ways. I want to thank you for your time. And I look forward to picking up this conversation at a later date. Majority Leader Bonasek. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes of April 7, 2017. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? 
Yes. Legislator Bureau. For the second month in a row, I request that item number 11 on the agenda, resolution of the Orange County Legislature with respect to the Heritage Trail parking lot, Raycourt Road, in the town of Blooming Grove, classifying the action as unlisted and determining that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts be withdrawn and referred back to physical services for one month. Second. Okay. And no objections? Not a problem. So ordered. Okay. Number one, which is a bond resolution requiring, I'm sorry, is there another one? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Number one, which is a bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. What? Okay. You put, you put two thirds there, so I just read what was in front of me. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Number one. Legislators Bonnets and Kemnins, Benton O'Donnell. Resolution of the County Legislature of the County of Orange, pursuant to the New York State Constitution, Article 9, and Municipal Home Rule Law, Section 40, sending a home rule request to the New York State Legislature seeking enactment of Senate Bill S5979 and Assembly Bill A7960 for a special law pursuant to New York State Tax Law, Section 1210, extending the three quarters of 1% increase to the sales tax rate. Discussion? Yes, Jeff. Well, I expect this will have a solid majority for this resolution. It's not any increased taxes, as we all know. It's a continuation of the current tax level. And it's my hope that, uh, that we'll extend the agreement that we have negotiated for the three cities. Uh, it's one of the things that I think is most important for the survival of Newburgh, Middletown, Port Jervis is the split in the sales tax, how we share it with all the municipalities. And not all counties do that. So I'm, I'm pleased that we do, and I'm hoping that we can do this early, extend the agreement. Thank you. Yes, Legislator Ricas. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to be voting no on this because I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us as public servants to do something that's rarely seen, and that is to reduce a tax rate. Uh, we saw from the state of the county speech that we had surplus, plenty of surplus that was put back into the general fund, and I think it's an opportunity that we should be making uh, and taking at this time. Hey, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Ekis? No. Baggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kemnitz? Yes. Pulisic? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Ruskevich? Yes. Biro? Yes. Brescia? 18 eyes, two no's. Okay, and I was remiss, um, during the pro uh, presentations, uh, Alan Abrams' daughter, Liz Southern, did come in, and she left. I wanted to mention that, but we got so tied up in the proclamations. But thank her for coming, please. Okay, number two. Legislators Brescia and Nagdastakis. Resolution of the Legislature of the County of Orange honoring the memory of Alan William Abrams, outstanding citizen, dedicated public servant, World War II veteran, and former county legislator for the 18th Legislative District on the first anniversary of his passing. Second. Roll call. Oh, Jim, you want to be added? Absolutely. Melissa, all Republicans? All Dems? All Dems. Michael? Yes. Yep. Okay, everybody. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Kemnins, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Number three. Legislators Amo, Bonasek, and Kemnins. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature with respect to State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEGRA, concerning a petition for the division of the town of Monroe to create the new town of North Monroe or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and town of Monroe, preliminarily typing the action as an unlisted action. Second. Discussion? 
Yes, let's let her eat Thank you, Mr. Chairman, again. Um, and I invite anybody to stop me or correct me any place along this little dialogue that I have where I'm wrong. Um, my, my general statement is we do not know what we're voting on here. I do see an attachment and a description there with the attachment uh, to this resolution. Uh, however, I'm under the distinct impression that we've been having meetings and by we, that does not include myself, nor the majority of this legislature, uh, on this particular issue. And I, I know we're gonna be told, well, we're just voting on this resolution, this paper here, this piece of paper right here. But I think we're all aware of what started, what the intent of this petition was. The intent of this petition was for KJ, Kiris Joel, to take in more property and to develop that property and develop it at a very high density. And that's what I've been told. Um, so I don't see any way that this is not, uh, with, with the intent which is listed there, that this is not an unlisted action. I think that we need to go back and take a look at it and find out really what we're voting on. What is it gonna be? I mean, even in, 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 in the resolution it says, or other suitable name identified by Orange County Legislature. Why haven't we decided what that is even? Why can't we approve the term North Monroe or what other name it might be? Now, I, I am not indicating in any way that I wanted to be in these meetings. I don't. What I am clearly indicating is I would have liked to have a meeting prior to today to find out what these meetings were about, to find out what adjustments might have been made, or maybe no adjustments have been made. But, Mr. Chairman, you called meetings with people, some of which I don't understand, unelected bodies, uh, and had discussions about this issue, and now you're saying, let's just push it forward. I know there's a timeline for this. I'm very, very aware of that. But we can call a special legislative meeting at any point in time to vote on this to be sure it gets in with it in the timeline. I cannot vote on this. This is a no vote for me and a solid no vote. And again, it's not because whether North Monroe or some other suitable named uh, uh, municipality, it's because of the process, which is an absolute disgrace to us as a legislature. Yes, I, uh, I just want to uh, clarify uh, some issues. Uh, I respect uh, Mr. Egas's uh, comments and uh, his uh, opinions and views with respect to um, the process, but let me explain what we're doing here today. Uh, today, uh, we did receive uh, part one of the environmental assessment form from the petitioner's agents. And, and let me clarify that the petition that was filed with the Orange County Legislature were by residents of the town of Monroe. Uh, there were over 2,000 signatures there, and those signatures um, asked uh, that a new that the town of Monroe be divided into two towns: a town of Monroe and a designated name of uh, a new town of North Monroe. Uh, in the process, uh, this has been determined to be an unlisted action as terms, uh, as a definition provided by the seeker regs um, under uh, 6 NYCRR section 617.6. .6. So in other words, uh, the uh, seeker uh, regulations dictate type one actions. This did not fall under a type one action as defined by the regs. It did not, fi uh, it, it did not uh, uh, come under the section of a type two action, which means that it would be uh, exempt from uh, a seeker review. Uh, so with the uh, assistance of the commissioner of planning and his department, we determined uh, to classify this action as an unlisted action. Before uh, the legislature uh, moves on the petition, uh, we believe this to be an action under seeker, subject to seeker review. And we are asking the commissioner of planning uh, to assist us in uh, 
in, in filling out the environmental assessment form on the petition and it's a request uh, to be uh, to create the new town of North Monroe. Um, so uh, they are in the process of uh, doing preliminary work on that. Uh, in my professional view, I, I uh, believe that this is quite similar to the annexation proceedings uh, that, that have been filed, the 164 and the 507, and that went through a thorough uh, environmental impact statement review, public hearing scopings. Um, so uh, we're not taking it to that level here, but we, uh, we do believe that um, the, the mere creation of this town uh, would uh, be subject to an environmental uh, assessment form review. Um, so that's what this is, This what this does. Um, as to uh, discussions regarding, um, you know, backroom uh, conversations, uh, I will acknowledge that there have been discussions. I have been in negotiations and, and discussions with the attorneys uh, for the petitioner's agents, with the petitioner's agents, uh, discussing a reduction of the map, but uh, the property that would be reduced uh, or the new map, as, as it's being called, uh, would be encompassed in the 381.9 acres as pres as the uh, present petition um, provides. Um, so we are nearly starting the process now on the environmental review. Uh, I think we would be remiss in not doing the environmental assessment uh, for, for this uh, petition. And so that's what we are doing here uh, today. So in essence, we are classifying the action as unlisted. I will note for the record, as it is stated in the environmental assessment form, which was prepared uh, by the attorneys for uh, the petitioners, that they do not believe that this matter uh, is an action subject to seeker. Um, so uh, we recognize their uh, acknowledgement uh, of their um, they're filing the form in essence under protest, but we uh, still believe we're gonna go forward with the seeker review and uh, classifying the action as enlisted and therefore um, directing uh, or requesting the commissioner of planning to review the part one of the uh, full environmental assessment form. We're gonna do a long form. We're gonna prepare, he's gonna uh, prepare a part two and a draft part three finding statements for review and consideration by the rules and enactments and intergovernmental uh, committee at its June 21st, uh, 2017. Uh, in my view, uh, any the more information you provide uh, to uh, the public and to the uh, legislature in making their determination whether or not to grant the petition is a good thing. And we have uh, really great staff and professionals uh, in our planning department. There is a lot of information that's been out there already with respect to the 507 and the 160, uh, uh, 164 and 5. 167 and 504 annexations, uh, so we're not reinventing the wheel. We do not believe we'll be spending a lot of money uh, doing this. It's pr predominantly staff time. We have coordinated, and part of the negotiations, I will tell you, is just uh, discussing uh, the, uh, the, the exchange of information uh, from uh, the petitioner's agents and uh, from their professionals and providing that information to our planning department so that we can uh, continue uh, to fill out uh, to the best of our ability the environmental assessment form. The, the, all of that information will be posted online for the public review, for public review and comment. Uh, and will be uh, encompassed in the public hearings, which we are planning to set in the next resolution. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Rikis, I, I, I respect your opinion, um, and uh, but I, do, I just want to explain what the process is, uh, why we're here, and uh, just one other thing that you mentioned uh, with respect to uh, the, the, the name, so to speak, for the new town. Uh, the, under, the, under the state laws, uh, town law section 73, it is the legislature who designates or determines what the new name will be. That, that, is, that is a decision that will be made ultimately by this body. Um, so we haven't gotten there yet, uh, and I think you want to hear from the public before you make any determinations on whether, one, you're going to grant the petition and then select a name, uh, but we're not there yet. Thank you.
Legislator Amy. Just a more more of a question for a legislative attorney. Uh, you said we'd be remiss if we didn't take action on this. Could you explain um, the mandate that we have when the 2,200 people gave, uh, gave us a petition to form the town? What is our responsibility as a legislative body going forward? Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, under uh, this uh, state law town, town law section uh, 73, the, uh, the, le the petition is filed with the clerk of the legislature, and I think that was filed September uh, 12th of 2016. Uh, and then after that you accept it, uh, uh, we did a preliminary review to make sure uh, in-house uh, to make sure that there were sufficient uh, number of uh, signatures on the petition. Uh, in our uh, view that there was, we posted uh, the petition uh, online. Uh, no one protested uh, the petition. Um, and uh, so the next step it would be to uh, do the environmental uh, review of the uh, uh, actions under Seeker and then to set a public hearing. And the public hearing uh, at has to be held um, at least, um, well, I, I don't want to say, uh, it has to be uh, held uh, before the legislature uh, grants, um, has a resolution uh, to grant the petition. And the, the petition has to be either granted or denied uh, 40 days uh, before uh, the uh, biennial town election for the town of Monroe, which would be November 7th, 2017. So that's our drop dead uh, date for to get it on the referendum on the ballot for the uh, for the uh, voters in Monroe. So uh, we need to set the public hearing. That's our next step. Um, and the public hearing uh, requires a notice to be published in the local newspaper or the official newspaper for the town of Monroe. That is, uh, I believe they use the Times Herald record as their uh, official newspaper. And that requires that it be posted uh, in that newspaper published for four consecutive weeks. So we're back, we're back timing of the uh, public hearings. Our plan is to have the public hearings either July 19th or 20th, uh, July 19th and continuing uh, July 20th. Uh, but if we cannot make that deadline, then we're asking in the next resolution that the uh, public hearings be held April, uh, August, uh, 15th and 16th uh, so give us some time uh, just to, to uh, just in case things fall apart somewhere along the line so it gives us uh, some breathing room so that's the process to uh, do the seeker uh, and have the commissioner of planning uh, present that at the june 21st uh, legislative uh, committee meeting at rules and then after that, uh, we would move forward. Uh, we'd receive those documents. We'd post them online. We'd have the public hearing, hear from uh, the public. And uh, it, we're holding it within the venue uh, in Keris Joel, as well as in Woodbury. Uh, and we're holding it in Woodbury because um, at the uh, Central Valley uh, Elementary School on uh, Route 32, uh, because of its um, the size, it has a very big auditorium. We anticipate that we'll get a lot of members from the public coming. You don't have to live in the town of Monroe uh, to participate in the public hearing, so we invite everyone to come out and express their views. Um, that's the input this legislature wants. Uh, to hear from all the public uh, and written comments will be received uh, by the clerk and they would be made part of the record. There'll be a store, court stenographer there to take uh, to take minutes for uh, of the meeting. So, so I, you know, that that's that's our time frame. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up, because I have a couple of questions. Okay. The questions is, is when, when you mentioned remiss, I, I, the one question I'm clear of, I think that ask you to sort of address is that our due diligence is that we must have this information before we make a vote. And I'm, I'm, I'm addressing Mr. Ekes' concern about why he's voting no. I'm wondering if, in fact, we don't have this, will we be uh, carrying out our due diligence in terms of looking at this issue so that we can vote? Or is that not an issue? You mean for the uh, June 21st meeting? No, uh, I mean for the North Monroe, you know, we're talking about this, this Right. If there's no modification before the June 21st meeting, we will be voting on 
the resolution as it is. Okay. On the 300. Well, I bet the double acre resolution. We need to do this. That's my point. We just can't vote no and not do this. We right. Have we have to do it. No we have to do it because we need to vote after that or a negative vote. Yeah, but I have this on, on this vote on this resolution. Right. And you know the other question. There is a possibility. Let me just interrupt for one second, Mike. Um, they, you know, if if there's an amended application before um, June 21st, and we need it by, we really want it by June 16th. Might get it, not get it until the 19th. If there is with a reduction in acreage, um, then rules can act on that, and then the public hearings can be pushed off until August. So, and, and so, so my comment again, thank you for your answer, Antoinette. That was helpful because I think a lot of folks don't know, and I think a lot of us in the legislature know all the details. I, I suspect there there were meetings. I were in some. There were a lot of discussions that I probably was not involved in. What I know to be a fact is here, and in the next one is that. Uh, the rumor mill has it that there's all these deals being made, and what I know to be fact, and somebody else, is at this very moment in time, 2,200 people asked for the creation of town of North Monroe, considering a size of 381.9 acres, and that's what we're talking about. We've heard people that say they want a smaller one, they want a different one, they want a global settlement. All of those things are on a wish list. All of those things are being discussed. The only thing we're talking about here is the petition of 2,200 people that said we got 381.9 acres we want in the town of North Monroe. As the chairman said, it may, it could change. Someone could come along with an agreement later or not. But right today, we're looking at that number. Thank you, Werner. I'm sorry, I saw you. Thank you. Um, I'm glad that you spoke before I did because you covered a lot of what I was going to say, but very particularly for me, it is imperative that the public hear what is truly going to be the environmental impact. I was very perturbed at what happened the first time around, and one of the, um, the issues that I raised was, we have to know what's happening to our land, our water, and also, you know, anything that pertains to a change in our land, especially with global warming, climate change, whatever you want to call it, that has to be taken into consideration. You can't look at what was. You have to look at what we are anticipating as well. So I am a definite yes. Thank you. Uh, yes, Legislator Hines. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I voted uh, no in committee on this, and I'm going to vote no again today. Uh, as Council pointed out, information is a good thing. I want more information, not less. I called for a full environmental impact statement on this property rather than just a few check marks in a box. Uh, there's a reason for that. By voting yes today, I believe we're declaring ourselves lead agency. Once you declare yourselves lead agency, you then have an obligation to determine what type of review will be done. So if we're gonna declare ourselves lead agency, in my mind, we have to do a full environmental impact statement, which will cost a lot of money. Um, the, the money, uh, I guess somebody had offered us 10, some of the petitioners, I guess, had offered $10,000 uh, with an agreement that the town of North Monroe would all, I'm sorry, the town of Monroe would also have to pay. I don't know that the town of Monroe wants to pay, and I haven't heard from them for that, but $10,000 is a drop in the bucket. It's unfair to all the taxpayers of Orange County to have to foot the bill for something that 2,200 people signed a petition for. So I think we need a full environmental impact uh, statement uh, we know that the lead petitioners are people that uh, represent KJ, the village manager, the village mayor, the attorney for KJ. So I assume that the town of North Monroe would use the same zoning as KJ, and we know that that's typically high density housing. Uh, the water uh, wells that they uh, plan on using in Cornwall, there's a legal stay on that right now. I'm told there's insufficient water right now in KJ, so I don't know where the water would come for this higher density. I don't know uh, where the sewer capacity would come from. We don't know the impact on social services and traffic and things of that nature. That's why we need a full environmental impact statement, a full environmental review, not just a few check marks on a box as has been submitted and as has been proposed uh, by some of the experts right here in Orange County. So uh, I'm a no on this. Let's do the full environmental impact statement. Let's get everybody on board to see what this is really all about for all of Orange County, not just the residents of Monroe. This is gonna affect everybody. And I think everybody is aware of that. This is a big project, and we're talking about a lot of money. And uh, to rush it to November, I, I don't see that that's even possible at this point, but I, I've been wrong before. Uh, full environmental impact review. We're a lead agency. Let's declare what we want to do now. I'm a no on this. Thank you. Okay, Legislator Berkman and Legislator Turnbull. Party Leader Turnbull. 
Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of issues floating around here, a lot of action, and it's, uh, I'll try to keep my first comments to the, to the forum before us. Uh, if we're going to have uh, an unlisted action, if we're saying that there's no significant negative impact on the environment, then, then let's have a discussion about it. When I look at this form, 13-page form, there's like a half a page filled out in some boxes. And then there's 12 empty, 12 and a half empty pages. Uh, right, so you know, we go with this fiction, not just on this vote, but on other votes when it comes to secret, that somehow we're, we're not, gonna, not going to comment on actual environment. We're actually commenting on the paperwork of the environment, some kind of, I think, an absurdity. But, but I voted no a lot of times just based on that. That's not unique to this case. To this case, uh, let's ask ourselves, uh, if we're going to have the state provides us the opportunity and the and the duty to do an environmental review, where is the discussion about the environmental review? Where is the discussion about uh, in in this document? Sewer on a county sewer plan, the traffic impacts, the air pollution, but the rest. I'm just an open, honest conversation. What the environmental impacts are going to be. I, uh, I, I'm clapping. I agree 100% with this. Okay. I have a. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the to the ultimate decision about whether it's in the best interest best interest of the people of Monroe to, to to buy, and whether it's the best interest of the people of Orange County to support that or not. But that's not before us today. Today it's the environment. It's the environmental form. Uh, also, how can we vote? I can't vote yes, not even knowing the amount of acres. We don't even know. I mean, there's a map that's created by this. That controversial, but it's a somewhat secret committee. Uh, when I saw the secret, it's not, it's like, I don't know when they meet, and I don't know, you know, what's being discussed. I, if it was an appointed committee that went through the legislature, then fine. That's probably the way it should have been. If the chairman wants to have a select committee, then, then fine. I'll announce it beforehand. But there's been meetings going on rumors of negotiations. We have lawsuits on this very issue about the size of the, of the, of the rules. So it's incomplete, that's my view. This information for us today is incomplete, and I can't support an incomplete document. If, if I can just address that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Berkman, for your uh, comments. Uh, the document that is attached to the resolution is the EAF Part 1 that was prepared by the petitioner's agents by their counsel. And in our resolution, we're asking the Commissioner of Planning to review that document. He has done, and he's here today, I don't want to put him on the spot, uh, but we, we do not, we concur with your, uh, with your assessment uh, that the part one is, is, is not complete um, and, uh, and, and you have to look at it that, that they, they basically are saying that they don't believe this action is subject to seeker. So here's your form, uh, but we're really not going to fill it out because it's not applicable. So they keep on just checking boxes, as you said, which is absolutely correct. Uh, I talked to Mr. Uh, Church um, and he is uh, prepared uh, to have his staff go through the document, uh, revamp it, review it, revamp it, and provide us with a, a an, an accurate uh, part one. Um, then go into the part two. Excuse me? So won't, won't we be approving it as an unlisted action today? We're just preliminarily typing the action as unlisted. Uh, so he's going to come back with all of the information for us. Uh, to make our decision on the uh, on the uh, seeker, and now as to the size of the property, at this point in time, we have one petition with one map and one meets and bounds description, and that's for the 381.9 acres. There is no other map available, um, or which is attached to the petition. The only individuals who have been authorized by the petitioners um, to, um, to revise or modify the petition 
are the petitioner's agents, as it's set forth in the petition. They have authorized uh, Idalia Sagadin, uh, Abraham Weeder, and Don Nickel to act as their agents to modify the petition. And that is part of the petition. It is a public document. It is on the county website. At this point in time, we have not received any modifications uh, to the map. No formal submissions have been made. So at this juncture, I can only go with what is a matter of record that has been formally filed with the clerk of the legislature, and that is the petition with the 381.9 uh, acres. So that's what we're moving forward with now. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I think it's unfortunate that we are where we are with this uh, process, and it's the process that I think many are critical of, uh, to the Chairman's credit. I just want to mention that he did notify me of a, a meeting, however, maybe the meeting it wasn't even clear to me whether the announcing of that meeting was an invitation or just to let me know that there was going to be a meeting. Um, my own feeling is that, that, that there is absolutely no justification for excluding uh, any legislator from a meeting of this sort. Uh, I don't see, you know, why uh, you would do that. You know, any legislator that wants to be in the room should be in the room. Uh, that's that's what we do. You know, I learned as a legislator that when I'm not sure, there's only one way to go, and that's to vote no. The few bad votes that I think I've made over the years have been a result of voting uh, for something that I was guessing would be okay, and subsequently found out I, I uh, made a vote that I would have taken back. So. I'm going to be a no vote today also. Senator Benelli. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to get back to the resolution, what we're actually being asked to do. And as legislative counsel basically said most of what I was going to say, and I'd like to reiterate it, we are dealing with the 381.9 acres of the land from the town of Monroe to create the new town of North Monroe pure and simple. That is all we are dealing with right now. We do not have an alternate map at this point that is being put before this legislature. Also, if you look at the result, what we are doing, and, and I agree with what my colleagues to the right and the left of me are saying, and we're directing the Commissioner of Planning to review and complete the part one, which we've all acknowledged is not complete, and further prepare Part two and part three, this will be um, brought back to the Rules Committee on June 21st for further review. And at that time, it's my understanding if we want to take it to a full-blown, as Mr. Hines is suggesting, a full environmental statement, we would have the opportunity to do so. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of talking here and about a lot of different meetings, but pure and simple, this is the resolution that is before us this afternoon. And if we have, if, and it is our obligation to continue to move forward with this. So I just wanted to clarify some of those issues, and I'd like to thank council for doing so as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd just like to clarify something with this, with respect to these so-called secret meetings. I can count on one hand the meetings that I've had with the the individuals we're talking about. I had one meeting in my office with Harry Poor and Mike Egan from United Monroe. A follow-up meeting in my office with two two members, John Allegro and Mike Egan from United Monroe and then two meetings with United Monroe and Karis Jewell and the legislators that represent portions of the town of Monroe and the village of KJ. Okay, Mike Lamo, Katie Benelli, myself, Myrna, and who else, am I, am I missing anybody? The, and the county exec were at two meetings. Once a, one aid leader was at and, one, and both Gedalia Zegadin was at. Okay, and we had representation from the county exec's office the county attorney, the county legislative attorney, and a few others. Those are the meetings that I had. Jeff, if I recall, you told me you've had dozens of meetings down there, of which I didn't know about until after. Let me finish. You can have the floor. That you had dozens of meetings down there with United Monroe. And I did tell Matt about the last meeting an hour before, and he told me that he was going to be meeting with the town of Monroe. I don't know if it was United Monroe, the town of Monroe afterwards. So 
Listen, I don't care who meets if we try to get some resolve on this issue. I'm not taking sides on this issue. And, and we, uh, we plan on bringing, having a public a work session with all legislators invited. But we're not going to get anywhere if we have a circus. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm not pushing anything other than what the legislature wants. We would like to have peace down in that area. The legislators that represent that area would like to have peace. But <laughs> let's not make this a circus. We've had maybe four, four meetings, to my recollection, on this issue. So don't sit there and say secret meetings this, because I didn't know anything about your meetings down there, and, and believe me, I'm open. If you have some good suggestions to, to resolve this issue, you know, we didn't talk about the, the um, annexation lawsuit. We talked about the petition before us and trying to get some resolve. So you want the floor? Go ahead. You know, there was a time, uh, well, let me just sum it up, Steve, by just open the door. Right? You want to build a consensus, then open the door for anybody that wants to go in. You know, that's, don't be afraid that, uh, that well then, uh, now it's my turn, right? Uh, for a while, it's true that you actually appointed me. There was four, the committee of four. We sat and met. We didn't get very far. I informed everybody. It was, it was left at the four to go back to the caucuses. I went back to the caucus and invited everybody to join with me to continue it in that. I went on my own for a while, it's true. I never negotiated anything. I, sh I showed up a, a, a map that I created as a suggestion for a basis of a conversation. I, I didn't offer my views other than that. Anybody was uh, encouraged, in fact, to join me in that effort. So to kind of justify uh, uh, your ad hoc committee, which did have substantial negotiations. I mean, it was even, we even have lawsuits involved. I'm curious, I, I, you know, Steve, I, I don't want to really uh, take you on like I know I can, all right? Like I know, we both know I can, you know? And I could really uh, give a, a vigorous defense of... of, of uh, but, 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 I'm, but I'm taking the high road here by not doing that. But I just, for, for the record, uh, for a while I was appointed to be a, a, a person with the information and then, and then it was denied. And it was interesting because the denial came right at the point where I was making good progress. Uh, and, and at any rate, when we, when we found out that many of us were being shut out of the process, uh, Minority Leader Turnbull invited some people to come to the caucus. And everybody knows that the Democratic caucus are open meetings. So anybody could have come to those meetings. Uh, so we could, we could talk about this if you want, Mr. Chairman, to clear the air rather than do it in public. But, uh, but I, have plenty, I have plenty to say, and I'm uh, proud of the fact that I uh, took initiative, that I stepped up, and that I tried to, tried to work to make things a little better than I found it. Okay. Roll call. Barry. Yes, Barry. Yeah, I, I just kind of like to bring us back to the resolution that we have before us. Thank you. Um, the petitioners suggested that seeker was not necessary in their petition. They gave us what would be deemed as an inadequate part one. And what this resolution does is it basically says we've looked at the document, we've looked at this petition, and we've said that it isn't a type one and it isn't a type two. So it's an unlisted action. We have to now determine, looking at, at the information that we have and what the uh, county planning department will give us, what the environmental review will require. So this is the first step in a process that I think we all want to have occur. And this doesn't say that, there's, that we're saying there's enough water. This doesn't say we're saying there's enough sewer capacity. All this says is we're gonna take a look at it and we're gonna decide as a legislative body. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. Ponisek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Emo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Yes. Berkman? No. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? No. Baggione? Yes. Hines? No. 
Chemnitz? Yes. Kulisek? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Paduk? No. Ruskevich? Yes. Biro? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 15 ayes, 5 noes. Okay, number four. <laughs> Legislators Amo and Fagione, resolution of the Orange County Legislature providing for a public hearing regarding a petition for the division of the town of Monroe into the town of North Monroe or other suitable name identified by the Orange County Legislature and town of Monroe pursuant to New York State Town Law Section 73. Second. Discussion. Yes, let's do I'd like to amend the resolution uh, as follows. Beginning with the resolution of Orange County Legislature providing for a public hearing regarding a petition for the division of the town of Monroe into the town of North Monroe, or the suitable name identified by this body, the Orange County Legislature, and the town of Monroe to include, and they want to include in there after number one of the resolution, uh, which ends with the date, with the, with the zip 1017, one, 0917. It begins, or in an alternative, such public hearing shall be held on Tuesday, August 15, 2017, at 6 30 p.m. at the Central Valley Elementary School, 45 Route 32, Central Valley, New York, 10917. And continuing thereafter, after on Wednesday, August 16, 2017, at 6 30 p.m. in, in Beish Rashawa Paradise Hall and Israel Zupak Drive, Monroe, New York, 10950. Should the rules in the enactment and intergovernmental relations committee determine that such a delay is warranted at its June 21st, 2017 meeting? And two, I'm sorry. And add to that too, uh, as many as amended by, and this goes on to number two on that same thing, or as may be amended by the rules enactment and governmental relations committee as it, at its June 21st, 2017 meeting. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Faggio? Hines? No. Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia, 18 eyes, two noes. Okay, number five. As amended. I'm sorry. Roll call as amended. I'm sorry. Roll call. Yes. Legislator Hines and then Lucas. On the resolution, I'm sorry. Back to the resolution. Yeah, I, uh, I like the resolution better before it was amended because I, did, I thought I knew what we were talking about, but I don't know what could happen between now and the Rules Committee meeting that would make us want to change the date. So uh, can Council please answer that? Of course I can. Uh, Mr. Hines. Um, one uh, thing that the uh, Chairman of the Legislature has been attempting uh, to do uh, is to meet with uh, local elected officials. And uh, we have not yet met with the town of Monroe. Uh, the chairman hasn't. I don't. I can't speak for the county executive. Um, but we would like the opportunity uh, to meet with the town board um, and to discuss uh, the petition as it stands uh, today, and perhaps any other uh, amendments that they might look for, uh, or changes, or any uh, proposals that have been made. Or, or proposed by, uh, by the petitioner's agents. Uh, so we'd like that opportunity uh, to do that. And we would also like the opportunity uh, to, to make sure that we have enough time for the planning department to complete the environmental assessment form and uh, uh, have adequate time for the public uh, to review it. Uh, so uh, the, those, are, the, those are the reasons that I'm looking to, and, and this was at my suggestion, 
uh, not the chairman uh, and not the uh, chair of the rules committee, is that I want to have a backup plan just in case something gets stalled here and I can't get the information out to the public in time for the public hearing on uh, July uh, 19th and 20th. So uh, I, I would then, if, if we couldn't meet that deadline, uh, then uh, I don't have to go back to the legislature uh, in the July meeting uh, to set a new public hearing. And it gets a little complicated because we've got this publication, we've got to publish in the Times Herald Record four consecutive weeks. You've got to give them, uh, I think Kelly said, at least three days notice before. We have to submit the public hearing notice three days before. That has to be prepared. It has to include the meets and bounds description. Uh, so I want to make sure I have a backup plan um, because this is, this is moving. The petition is before us as a matter of state law. <coughs> Uh, it has to go before the legislature. If we are to meet uh, the November 7th general election deadline, um, it has to be before the legislature by no later than like September 20th. They have to determine whether they're going to grant the petition or not. So I want to make sure that uh, it's out there in the public domain, uh, that we're setting these public hearings. We know it's vacation time, but I know a lot of people, uh, well, most people, uh, are taking this very seriously. You hear the debate here. It's it's very contentious up here. People um, people are. It's a very emotional topic for every single legislator here. Uh, they take their job seriously. Um, it's uh, it, there's a lot of deliberation. It's the first time ever that this legislature or or or. I think the last time this happened was uh, 1970s in Westchester County uh, with the uh, with Peekskill, um, where they were seeking to uh, alter the boundaries uh, for a, uh, uh, a village in a town. Uh, so we take this seriously. I want to have a backup plan. I want to make sure the public knows the, the dates so that they can come out, that the legislators can be there, uh, and we can hear your input, and we can present you all the information we possibly can um, so that you can give feedback to this legislature uh, to vote on um, as to whether or not they should grant this petition or not. So this, is, this assumes that uh, some negotiation is going to be successful, that's why there's a backup date? Is that correct? Well, I, 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 I'm not saying whether the negotiations will be successful or not. Um, we are negotiating, we are discussing reduction of acreage, um, but all of those things are still out there. Um, nothing has been concluded. If there is a new map, and if there are negotiated terms and conditions that come with that map, those terms and conditions, that agreement, will be presented to the legislature. Because don't forget, this petition and the granting of it is a legislative prerogative. This legislature has to vote on whether they want to grant the petition or not. This legislature has to decide whether they want an alternative, uh, a settlement agreement. So you will have to adopt a resolution or reject a resolution by a majority vote as to whether or not you want to enter, if you want to settle an alternative petition uh, with, with uh, the uh, petitioner's agent. So, so that's going to come to you and we will have to have that before this legislature. So you're gonna to have to pass a resolution uh, once the settlement agreement, if there is one, if, if we get to that point, that will come before this legislature. We're gonna make sure, uh, the chairman has directed that that be made a public document uh, and disclosed to the public before you vote on it. He wants to make sure that if it happens, Every single legislature up here has ample opportunity to review the settlement agreement uh, and uh, provide input. And then you, the legislature will vote on whether or not you want to accept it. And if you do accept it, then you're going to authorize uh, the chairman of the legislature uh, to vote, um, to, to, to sign it. Um, there have been um, some comments here, and I just want to clear it for the public and for legislators. Um, that, that um, you know, we're attempting to settle litigation in this matter. Um, litigation under our charter is not a prerogative of the legislature 
for uh, of the chairman. Uh, there was only one piece of legislature that was uh, one piece of litigation uh, that was uh, brought uh, against the county legislature, and that had to do with the pipeline and uh, our former uh, uh, legislator uh, Roxanne Donnery on the on the uh, pipeline litigation. So that's the only one that's really within our purview. Any other litigation regarding annexation proceedings, uh, regarding economic development that was brought by Kiris Joel against the county, that is not within the purview of the legislature, that's within the purview of the county attorney. So we don't really have any say or authority over that litigation. Uh, that would be something that would have to be resolved uh, with the uh, law department. All right, so I guess my opinion would be this. I'm all for the, the public hearings on July 19th and 20th, but I don't like this new public hearing date because it has uh, a lot of things that make me uncomfortable, especially since I do sit on the Rules Committee and I don't know when I'm gonna get any kind of documents to look at to make the next decision. So I would say that if we're gonna have another public hearing, we should set it at our July meeting if this doesn't work out. So I'm gonna be a no on this because of the amendment, but I do wanna hear from the public on July 19th and 20th. Thank you. Minority Leader Turnbull. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it you? Okay. Chris Ekis, I'm sorry. No. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, just, uh, you, you asked a question in the last debate, and, and in all honesty, I do not want to be in these meetings, the, the four meetings that you had mentioned. I don't want to be in future meetings. But I think if you want to try to clear it up and be, you know, so it works well, uh, take notes. Uh, have, the, have the secretary, the clerk, record it and give us notes of what's going on there because now going to this resolution and talking uh, as our uh, legislative attorney said, this is very important to us. If we get a new map, uh, if there are <coughs> some alterations, notice it's all if, what would be very important for me would be to see how we got there. You know, the, the discussions that were had in these meetings. And so uh, that, that's why I would suggest either record the minutes or call a special meeting of the legislature together uh, and tell us what was discussed, who said what, and so on like that. So just a couple ideas there. As far as this goes, it's interesting, uh, again, our legislative attorney said, uh, you know, that we don't have part in the lawsuit. Um, if I'm correct, we lost on the stay on development of the 164 acres in the annexation. And, uh, but that discussion was after that brought back to us uh, with the fact that uh, we as a legislature give the money to follow suit with this lawsuit. And you see, one of the things that I'd like to know right now is what kind of money is left in that account? How long is this lawsuit going to go on? Because I personally do not want to be sitting up here or in front of a public hearing with us suing uh, or appealing a lawsuit, I'm sorry, appealing a lawsuit on 164 acres, which are included in the 381.9 acres. I think the public is going to make a laughing stock out of us on that issue. Here we are, you know, making an appeal, saying we don't approve the annexation, we didn't want the development in there, but we're moving ahead with this. Now, I too want to hear what the public has to say, but I would, if at all possible, and I. I I understood what our attorney said, but I would love to first try to get this lawsuit, the appeal to the lawsuit, clear first, and then continue on with it. To me, that's logic, but uh, maybe other people aren't thinking that way, I don't know. Uh, and again, I, I really think that we're putting ourselves up for it. Just my final statement is I let the amendment go ahead with it because I was gonna vote no, and am gonna vote no, no matter what anyway, on the public hearings. Okay, let's just Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, clearly, uh, the discussions that have gone on and, and the information the media has presented portrays a rather murky process. Who would not, who would ever disagree with that? But at the same point, none of us really have a crystal ball at this table, at least. I certainly don't. I'm pretty, pretty close to the issue and talk pretty pretty regularly with uh, my constituents or some of the petitioners, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the public is going to say. We don't know what kind of outcome we may get at our vote to make put this on a referendum. That's all conjecture. We need 14 votes. We don't know that. 
We have no idea what the vote of the, of the referendum will look like. We need to get information. We need to get as much information back as possible. I'm voting yes for this. And I want to make a statement regarding my vote, um, which is maybe a little historic. Uh, I think it's a very positive resolution. Setting a public hearing for residents in the area to voice their opinions, their concerns, their support for the creation of the new town is so appropriate. In my 19 years in this legislature representing District 1, I have been frustrated many times with the role the county has played opposing the development or any growth in, in the town of Monroe by the village of Kier's Joel without ever having an, an opportunity to look at the planning model they would want to use. On my years of proceeding coming on the board, I was on the planning board in the town of Woodbury, and we remembered learning that you can never stop growth, you always have to plan for it. And, and that's something I think we as a legislative body and a county have failed at doing here in, or in the southern part of the county, planning for what appears to be an inevitable, inevitable growth. May not like it, but it's inevitable. Finally, this public hearing that will give the residents of, of Monroe the opportunity to speak to us about their future. As we listen and parsing out all the special interests, and there are a lot of them down there. Uh, you need, as they said about baseball, you need a scorecard to know who's talking to you. There's so many special interests going on in the town of Monroe that it's really hard for me and I suspect most legislators to know what the, what's the fact and what's not the fact. I'm confident that we'd hear from the, we'll hear from the residents that they want to have this last word on what happens to their town publicly and we will hear it. We'll have it recorded, we'll listen to it, it'll become a public document. If after hearing what they tell us, we may feel that the right thing to do is to give the 40,000 plus residents of the town of Monroe a vote via a referendum in their own town on whatever that petition is. At this point, we know what the petition is. And as the legislative council told us, the only three people that technically can change that are the three agents for the petitioners. So we can talk about all these special interests that are meeting with people and coming up with their, with their wonderful plans of compromise. For me, it doesn't make any difference. It's gonna get down to whether or not the three agents who submitted the 2,200 petitions are willing to accept anything and change their petition. If not, we're voting on 381.9 and that's where we are. So we should give them the opportunity to vote accordingly. Whatever the outcome of our September vote here in this body uh, or uh, a vote in November is, the role of, and the hard work of this county will be clear and will begin anew. And let me tell you what I mean by that, because I lived in that area and some of us live there. The new class of legislators will be joining us here in January 2018 will be challenged how to help Monroe, whether it's old Monroe or new Monroe, to come together with their neighboring towns to resolve to form a cohesive, multicultural region in the southeast part of the county. If that new class can't do that, we are in serious trouble in the southern part of the county. We have towns that have to learn to work together given the new dynamics. That will be our challenge. And perhaps we'll decide to invest some planning in planning for the future of the southern part of our county, rather than to continue the litigation that wants to preserve the past. Okay, roll call. Wanasek? Yes. Turnbull? No. Abel? Yes. Benagnostakis? Benton, yes. Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, no. Fagione, yes. Hines, no. Pemnitz, yes. Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduke, Ruskevich, Bureau, yes. Brescia. 17 eyes, three no's. Okay, number five. Legislators DeSalvo and Hines, resolution to apply for, accept, appropriate, and implement a federal transit administration grant, the matching New York State Transit Grant, and a local county match for the Orange County Department of Planning, pursuant to section 99-H of the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion. 
Roll call. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Briskevich? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Number six. Legislators Turnbull and Fagione. Resolution creating a voluntary separation agreement for Orange County employees. Second. Special. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Yes. Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulasek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Bureau, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, number seven. Legislators Turnbull, Benton, Chemnitz, Benelli, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to abolish clerk two and create receptionist Spanish English speaking at the Orange County Department of Social Services pursuant to section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonus. Yeah, I'm sorry, Legislator Burton. Yeah, I'd like to have my name added to this resolution, and then I'd uh, make a comment that I'd, I don't, Mr. Gross, who I see sitting out there, could look into, if you haven't already, the, uh, the idea of uh, having Orange County sponsor Spanish classes or maybe work a deal or an arrangement with the BOCES or the community college for anybody in various departments that would like to learn a second language. Yes. Could you have Early added, yeah. Jim Sabo added, Jim Kulasek added, Mike Paduk added, all Dems, okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Okay, number eight. Legislators Turnbull and Benton, an act amending the appropriate Orange County employment schedules to create Director of Workforce Development at the Orange County Department of Human Resources, pursuant to Section 2.02i of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Legislator Amo? This is, this is something that is really long term and coming and, and in the memory of one of our legislators, Dennis Simmons, and I used to talk about this all the time, the importance of, of educating uh, the workforce in the county government. Um, I began my career in mental health and health care, uh, running a, a, a medical education program, and realized how, how important it is to get the message to all your employees about what you as an organization want to do in terms of, and in the policy you want to implement. in. When I came to this body, I realized we don't, as Orange County, have a function for staff development. We kind of just assume that when we send a memo or when we pass a law, everybody will understand it. It doesn't work that way. It really has to get that message to all people, whether the person is the highest level in the county or someone that works in one of our departments or someone that, that cuts grass for us. How do we get that information to them? And so the, the brilliant move of Mr. Gross to be able to realize that we needed to develop a model where we can start rolling out in-service education and development of all staff is it should be complemented and, and this should should pass unanimously. I can't imagine it won't. Okay. Roll call. Bonasek, Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. And number nine. Legislators Ekis and Benton, resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing the inclusion of certain real property in Orange County Agricultural District Number 1, pursuant to New York State Agricultural Markets Law, Section 303B. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Bonasek, Turnbull, Amo, yeah. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Briskevich, Bureau, Brescia, 20 eyes. 11 withdrawn, 12. I'm oh, 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I jumped too far. 
Uh, Legislators Berkman and Dillard, at resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the county executive to the Orange County Electrical Licensing Board. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Cheney. Yes, I'll be abstaining on this because my name is included, but I wholeheartedly endorse uh, all the other members that have been proposed. I've been serving on this board since I came on the legislature three years ago, and uh, they do a very good job. Okay, thank you, Mary. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney abstention on himself? Dillard? DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Kemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. Okay. He doesn't have to abstain, by the way. Number 12. Legislators Ruskevich and Benton, resolution of the Orange County Legislature, assuming lead agency status under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQA, with respect to the fee acquisition of parcels under eminent domain procedure law in connection with the replacement of Grove Drive Bridge in the town of Tuxedo, Classifying the action is unlisted and determining <coughs> that the action will not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Barry, you just want to be added, right? Okay, Jeff, and then Legislator Turnbull, Minority Leader, excuse me. Thanks, Steve. Uh, I have a, a question about, it says eminent domain, but isn't this a willing buyer and seller? I, I think I can answer that if I might. Um, yeah, this came before physical services. Um, the property owners are willing uh, to enter into an agreement, but the mortgage holders, there's a primary and secondary mortgage holder, and those two can't agree on who should get the money. So this is the most expedient way to move the project forward. Okay. Matt, were you okay with that? Or you? Okay. All right, roll call. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, e Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 19 eyes, one abstention. Okay, number 13. Legislators Ruskevich and Benton. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature authorizing acquisitions under eminent domain procedure law of three interests in a parcel of real property situated in the town of Tuxedo, County of Orange, State of New York, in connection with the bridge project known as the replacement of Grove Drive Bridge. Second. Special, yes. Added. Cheney added. Roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Turnbull. Yes. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis. Benton. Berkman. Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Miscavige, Vero, Brescia. 19 eyes, one abstention. Number 14. Legislators Benelli and Kulasek, resolution authorizing the filing of an application for state assistance from the Household Hazardous Waste State Assistance Program and the signing of the Associated State Master Grant contract under the appropriate laws of New York State. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Turnbull. Yes. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis. Benton. Berkman. Benelli. Cheney. Dillard. DeSalvo. Ikes. Fagione. Hines. Keminens. Kulasek. O'Donnell. Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Number 15. Legislators Benton and Dillard, resolution authorizing the private sound conveyance of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County, pursuant to section 10184 of the Real Property Tax Law and Orange County Amended Local Law Number 2 of 2010. Second. Session. Roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Turnbull. Yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Briskevich, Biro, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 16. Legislator Benton, resolution approving the applications for the correction of certain 
errors appearing on the 2016 tax rolls for certain towns and districts and ordering the correction of said errors pursuant to section 554 of real property tax law. Second. Discussion? Local. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Annette Nostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Pulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Miscavige, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 17. Legislator Benton, resolution approving the applications for the correction of certain errors appearing on the 2017 tax rolls for certain towns and districts and ordering the correction of said errors pursuant to section 554 of the real property tax law. Second. Discussion. Okay. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vera, Brescia. 20 ayes. Number 18 requiring two thirds vote. Legislators Benton and Benelli, bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing technology upgrades, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is $2,870,500, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 2,870,500 bonds of the County to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Roll. Yes. Yeah, yes, Curley's added. Pagione's added. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduk? Ruskevich? Vero? Brescia? 20 eyes. Okay, number 19, another bond. Legislators Chemnitz, Nagnostakis, Benton, and Dillard. Bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the upgrading of nursing mechanical lifters at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 50,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Roll. Roll added, yeah. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 20, bond resolution as well. Legislator Sullivan, Ekis, Benton, Kulisek. Bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the replacement of bedside cabinets at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 37,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 37,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. Yes. Roll call. Yes, Curly added. Roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, number 21, another bond. Legislators Ekis, Chemnitz, Benton, and Hines. Bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the replacement of food service tray assembly line at the Valley View Center. Stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 140,000, appropriating said amount therefore and authorizing the issuance of 140,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yes, Paul, want to be added? Next yep. three as well. Next three as well, I'll add Paul. Okay, roll call. Honestly? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 eyes. Number 22. Legislators Berkman, Amo, and Benton. Bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. 
bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the upgrade of food service equipment at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 50,000, appropriating said amount therefor, and authorizing the issuance of 50,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion? Yes, Legislator Purdue. Just a question for Council. On every one of these bonding resolutions, it talks about five years of usefulness. Is that like a guaranteed warranty, or is that the amount of time they have to spend that money on those objects? Uh, that is under uh, the uh, state, New York State uh, Finance Law, and it provides for, uh, it's, it's specific, it provides in the law the probable, per, uh, probable usefulness of, of the uh, classification of, of the uh, bonding uh, based upon the project that's being bonded. So for instance, it's, it, it's a classic case that uh, equipment, furniture, uh, would be uh, like software, uh, computers, that would receive a five-year uh, PPU, uh, and, uh, but that's for the financing. That, that's not how long the actual object will last or the warranty it has nothing to do with the, with the physical features of, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, item that's being uh, uh, financed. Uh, so for instance, if you were uh, bonding a road that might get uh, 20 years, if you're building uh, a structure, a building, depending upon whether it's built with cement or sticks or, or mortar, uh, would determine whether it would be a 20 or 30 year PPU. So. And uh, important to point out that probably cost you a half million dollars in uh, resolutions here to work at Valley View that um, a lot of that money is, is getting back uh, as high as uh, 70%. So um, that's a, we had a question about why we would bond such small amounts sometimes. But that's, that's, that's okay, roll call. Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Baggione? Hines? Chemnitz? Kulisek? O'Donnell? Paduke? Ruskevich? Vero? Brescia? 20 ayes. Okay, 23. Legislators Amo, O'Donnell, Benton, and DeSalvo. Bond resolution dated June 1st, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing the replacement of furnishings at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated maximum cost thereof is 167,000, appropriating said amount therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 167,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. The Duke added. Curly added. Okay, roll call. Bonasek. Yes. Turnbull. Yes. Amo. Yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Number 24, another bond. Legislators Chemnitz, O'Donnell, Benton, and Agnostakis. Bond resolution dated June 1, 2017. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing various purposes at the Valley View Center, stating the estimated total cost thereof is 110,000, appropriating said amount therefore, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 110,000 bonds of the county to finance said appropriation. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Oh, early added. Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Anagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 25. Legislators Anagnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Ekis, Chemnitz, Ruskevich, Sullivan, Berkman. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating June 24th through June 30th, 2017 as Helen Keller Deaf Blind Awareness Week. Okay, all Republicans, all Democrats. Michael, you're already there. That's right. I should have looked at it. Okay. Roll call. Of course I. Roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. and Agnes Dacus, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ikes, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulisek, 
O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia, 20 eyes. Wish you had that foresight on the ponies, probably, right? 26. Legislators Bonasek, DeSalvo. Resolution confirming the reappointments and appointments by the county executive to the Orange County Fire Advisory Board, pursuant to section 18.07 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Okay, discussion? Yes. Okay. Legislator Hines. All good people, Kevin's added. Sure thing. Okay. DeSalvo added. Okay. Local. Bonasek? Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Dillard, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vero, Brescia. 20 ayes. Okay, number 27. Legislators Hines, Bonasek, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Paduk, Vero. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept a certain gift on behalf of the Orange County Sheriff's Office pursuant to Section 215 of the county law. Second. All Republicans added? Okay. Berkman added? Okay. Well, Amo added? Okay. Roll call? Bonasek? Yes. Turnbull? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nagnostakis? Benton? Berkman? Benelli? Cheney? Dillard? DeSalvo? Ekis? Fagione? Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Vera, Brescia. 20 eyes. Okay, 28, all Republicans, I think, you told me earlier. Okay. Legislators Bonasek okay. and Fagione. Resolution authorizing the county executive to accept hazmat equipment on behalf of the Orange County Department of Emergency Services Fire Services Division, pursuant to Section 215 of the county law. Second. Okay, discussion? Yes, Berkman added, Paduk added, Early added. Okay, roll call. Bonasek, yes. Turnbull, yes. Amo, yes. Nagnostakis, Benton, Berkman, Benelli, Cheney, Diller, DeSalvo, Ekis, Fagione, Hines, Chemnitz, Kulasek, O'Donnell, Paduk, Ruskevich, Bureau, Brescia. 20 ayes, Mr. Chairman, and the desk is clear. Okay, we've got two speakers, Scott Martins. Martins, West Town, regarding public health and safety of county residents. Oh, Virginia left? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity <clears throat> to speak um, to you guys today. Uh, first, I want to say to the chairman, uh, pardon me for my uh, show of support for uh, Legislator Bergman. Um, yeah, it's a very big day for the environment. I mean, we're, we have a president who's decided that we're gonna leave an agreement that was made with over 100 countries in this world to, um, to, lead, our, 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 to lead the world into a better place. Because we, we've made mistakes in the past. And we're making a huge mistake here in Orange County with this CPV power plant. This is a public health and safety issue. Of course, we can sit here and we can talk about economics and we can talk about jobs, you know, but Health will always trump economics. If we don't have good health, then it doesn't matter how much money we have, our prosperity. Our prosperity is in our health and our well-being. And if we're, gonna, if we're gonna support this kind of project, taking a step back, what does that say for, for Orange County? We're, we're, let's, 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 let's be orange is the new green. How about that for a slogan for Orange County? Okay, let's be, let's be the Orange County where people come up here and, 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 and it's an example of, 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 of beautiful farms, the heritage that was spoke about before. Let's, let's just have an environmental review of this power plant. New information has come out now, thanks to the way we had a six trial, that is not even close to what CPV has ha gave out. So if you guys took that information from CV, CVV, CPV initially and said, okay, this doesn't sound too bad. Well, that was grossly exagger un un uh, exaggerated. It was wrong. And we know that now. And we have an opportunity because it's not functional yet. It might be big, it might look big, it's not over yet. There's state precedent that things have been shut down before. But what we need is we need leaders. We need leaders to stand up and say, we need some environmental review. We need to do something to protect our children. These are our kids. 
there are kids that are going to breathe this air. You said before, protect our air and our water, right? That's, that's, that's important to you? What about this project? I urge you all, again, please, find out the information. If you don't know the information yet, look for it. It's all there. It's on protectorangecounty.org. It's, 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 it's easily available. And if, and if you don't find out, then, then it's on you. It's on you guys. This is your legacy. This legacy that's going to pollute our environment for the next 25, 30 years. It's going to be on you. Is that, is that what you guys want to leave? I don't think so. We can move forward with this. We can, we can, we can, we can develop economically on other projects. Wind and solar and renewable energy is a far greater job creator right now than fossil fuels. That's a fact. So I urge all of you to please stand up for your constituents, learn about this place, and, and, and at the very least, give your constituents the information so that they can decide. What information was given to the public about this? A, 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 a public hearing that was, that, was, that was advertised in the time child record in the legal notices? Nobody reads those. Something as big as this has got to be better publicized. This is, this is, the, this is the, gonna be the third biggest polluter in New York State, right in Orange County, built at the lowest elevation in Orange County. Scott, please conclude. I will, thank you. Why? It was a mistake, and it's fine to make mistakes, but it's not fine to let them go when we know better now, and it's not too late, so please, 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 please help us. Help this county, help my kids, my two boys, because I want to stay here. And let's do something about this. Let's get together and let's do something about this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay, the July 6th meeting I'm going to announce is at 7 p.m.